Hi, class. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hi, Angela. Hi, Bert. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Claudia. Hi, teacher. How are Hi. you? Good evening, sir. Good evening. How is life? What's wrong with my camera? How is life treating you today? Well, let me tell you that they they were actually real people. <laughs> they were what? <laughs> yeah, they were real people. Oh, they were. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny because we all we all were really scared because we thought they were bad, but actually they're not. But they real people. The thing is, they just pop up suddenly, appear in the conversation. Think about it. A bunch of people, five mm -hmm. girls, just entered to the meeting. Nobody say anything about them, but they just stop, start talking, and they just interrupt everything, and they start making games. I mean, just like, uh, how do you say technique? The, 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 the... Technique. The, yeah. So that was really weird because they act really weird not that natural because uh, maybe they were so high <laughs> so extroverted way and so we thought they were bot mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, but they're not but they real people okay yeah because i was thinking the first lady the the, the when the first video you sent me i said okay maybe she's not real but oh I don't know. She was too common. So I thought maybe it was going to be another, like a better, a better image. Yeah, that's right. But I asked my boss about, about it and he said, no, they're real. They're actually real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about it. In the future, we will not be able to recognize whether it is a robot or, or a real person. Yeah, that's true. So we're going to get Starlink internet. Starlink Internet. Okay. <clears throat> Claudia Giron, how are you? I'm doing well um, today. And yesterday and today are my day off. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Tuesday and Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> my Friday is, is Monday. <laughs> oh. Yes. Do you like that? No, but I have to. <laughs> yeah. But you know, for me, the best is Sunday and Monday. Yes, Sunday and Monday. I hope the next uh, change will be Sunday and Monday. Because when, when you work, you really, when, when you work and you don't work on the weekends, everything is closed. Banks. Yeah. So you can't do anything. But when you work, when you rest on a weekday, it's good because you could do something. Yes. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. We did the reading about Sydney, correct? Let me open this. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, yes, teacher. Yes, right. teacher. Okay, let's do this listening. 
This is Maria and Ian. They talk about life in Sydney. I have a question. If you had an option to visit a country or to live in a different country, where would you go? I like Canada. Canada, okay. Yeah, Canada is nice. New York for me. <laughs> New York for you. Well, yes. I would love to live to live like in Switzerland or Finland. Noruega, something like that. Holland, imagine that's cool. Okay, let's listen. Let's let's listen to the listening. Listen to Maria and Ian talk about life in Sydney. Who seems to enjoy living there more? How do you enjoy living in Sydney, Maria? I love it. I lived in a little mountain town in the U.S. before I moved here, so I'm really enjoying Sydney life. And the climate is great most of the year. What do you like most about it? Well, for one thing, it's a very easy city to get around. The public transportation is pretty good, which is important for me because I don't have a car. So, you see, I use buses and trains most of the time. I can usually get wherever I want to pretty easily. How about you, Ian? Well, it's a very beautiful city. I love the harbor and the opera house. And the beaches are great, of course. Oh, yeah, the beaches are great. There are great beaches close to town, like Bondi Beach. I know, it's true. But I don't have a lot of time to go to the beach because I have to work two jobs to make enough money to pay the rent. Actually, I'd really prefer to live somewhere smaller. I find Sydney too fast, too noisy, and definitely too expensive. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just lucky, but my rent's not bad at all. Actually, since I'm splitting the rent with two roommates now, it's about the same as I was paying in the U.S. And, um, yeah, I love the nightlife here, too. On weekends, my friends and I usually go to a club or a place with live music. There's always something interesting going on downtown. I've made lots of friends since I moved here. That's great. Ian, what do you do for fun in Sydney? Well, not much, I'm afraid. It's so expensive to do anything here. Also, you know because of the high rents, I can only afford to live out in the suburbs. And there isn't much happening out there, believe me. Hmm. I guess once in a while I like to go to Chinatown, though. There are plenty of restaurants there where you can eat fairly cheaply. Good ones, too. Is that right? I can't seem to find cheap food anywhere. In fact, the restaurants near me are so pricey that I hardly ever eat out. All right, here's a question. If you could change one thing about the city, what would it be? The traffic, without a doubt. I used to drive back in my hometown, but I hardly ever drive here. There are far too many cars, and drivers are very aggressive. You have to know where you're going, and you have to drive fast, otherwise other drivers can be really rude. See, I don't have a car, so that doesn't really bother me. Actually, you know, I wouldn't change anything. It's so much better here than the tiny little town where I used to live. I don't know. Sometimes I think life is better back home. Sure, it's smaller, but it's easier to live a good life. And you get to know the people better, too. Hold on, where's my video? <clears throat> Can you see me? No. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, there you go. <clears throat> okay. So, you see, it's not only in El Salvador that it's expensive to live. It's everywhere in the world. Now, Question number one, Ian, uh, Maria and Ian talk mm -hmm. about life in Sydney. 
Who seems to enjoy living there more? Maria. Maria, she mentioned she likes to go out at night. She likes her friends, the nightlife. So introduction, listen again, which person has these opinions? It's easy to get around Sydney. Who said that? Both. both. Uh, yeah. They both said that? Okay. The beaches are great. Both. The rents are expensive. Ian. Ian. It's a fun place to live. Maria. The restaurants are all expensive. Maria. Yeah. I would think it's both, no? Okay, life is better in a small town. Yeah. Nope, only Maria said it's easy to get around Sydney. Okay. Hold on a minute. Give me one second. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay, a tale, a tale of two cities. Do you know what is a tale? I don't know. A story? Yes. But also like, for example, hey, tell me the tale of El Cipitillo. So that's a tale. They even have a lot of fairy. Cuento. Like fairy tale, remember fairy tale? Okay, let's see. So, a tale of two cities, Melbourne and Sydney. By looking at the pictures, what do you think is the difference between Melbourne and Sydney? One is architectural and the other one is technological, I think. Yes, from what I see, Sydney is modern and Melbourne is more like Antique, yeah. old school. Okay, so listen, Sydney has its opera, opera house and harbor. Melbourne has quaint old buildings and parks. Sydney has spectacular beaches, but Melbourne's are less crowded. Talk to Melbourians and they'll say their city is the best. Talk to Sydney siders and they'll say Sydney is the number one place to live. According to many Melbourians, inhabitants live a life of ideas, discussion and database. People are active in arts and live well. Then again, that's what Sydney Sydney ciders say about their city too. Talk to a uh, talk to a Melbourian, and they'll tell you 
their city has friendlier and more outgoing people than Sydney. Most Sydney siders won't disagree about their city being less friendly. Nevertheless, they'll be quick to tell you that it's dynamic. World-class city with tons of things to do and see. Sydney ciders say that they are always busy enjoying all that their city offers, such as crashing surf at Bondi. Bondi Brett, sorry. Or manly beaches. Bush walks through the Sydney Harbor Park, Harbor National Park, or browsing in Peddington's colorful weekend market. People in downtown Sydney are always on the move, rushing to make contacts, cutting deals, and gaining influence. In Melbourne, eating out is a pastime, and the pace of life is slower and easier. Melbourne may, be, may not have great surfing of Sydney, the beautiful Darling Harbor, or the Opera House. Instead, it's low-key and savvy. You have to dig a little to get under the surface, but once there, you'll find perfect examples of a chick. Ultra-modern city. Sydney looks internationally for inspiration, but Melbourne tends to look regionally. To Japan, for example, in a world where to compare them to American cities, Sydney would be Los Angeles and Melbourne would be New York. In El Salvador, which are the two rivalities? Rivalities, remember? I'm not sure, but I would say San Salvador and, and Santa Ana, maybe. Yeah, you know, I would say Santa Ana, too. Because Santa Necos are very proud of Santa Ana. Como dicen sucursales del... And the most popular uh, woman from the, this country is from Santa Ana, too. The beautiful woman. No, the most popular one is from Santa Ana. Who is she? Mm, the one from TikTok, Nicole. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's from Santa Ana? <laughs> she's from Santa Ana, yes. Mm. I'm saying that because they took it like a joke. She said she was the most popular woman from this country one day, and, and people started to laugh at her. So it's like kind of a joke. Saying but, that she is the but, most she, popular. but she is popular, no? No, I mean, I agree, but people get upset if you say that. So that, oh. that's why they take it like a joke. How many followers does she have? Like 5 million or something, right? She's over 1 million, I know, but I'm not sure how many. Wow. So she makes good money. I imagine she makes good money, right? Okay. So next. My platform closed. Give me one second, please. Yeah. Okay. What happened, man?
Is your platform open? It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Mine is not charging. Come on, platform. Oh, there it is. Okay. So listen, um, by the end of this lesson, Participants will be able to understand and use reduce time clauses. Let's see what this is about. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. 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 Okay. Hi, are you ready to learn about reduced time clauses? Stay and learn what they are about. We will learn today about how some adverb clauses of time can be changed to modify phrases, but only when the subject of the adverb clause and the main clause are the same. If you use time expressions like right before, before, right after, after, and while, the time clauses can be reduced. Let's study the following sentences. After I finish my work, I head to the office. After finishing my work, I head to the office. Notice how in the second sentence we omit the subject and change the verb finish to present participle, finishing. Remember the present participle always ends in ing. This is another example using while. While I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap. It can be changed too. While taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap. Notice we omitted the subject again and the verb take became taking. However, other time clauses cannot usually be reduced. For example, ever since I was a kid, I've had trouble getting up early. As soon as I get up in the morning, I race off to the gym. Until I've had my coffee break, I'm such a grouch. Whenever you have to work with numbers, plan to do it around noon. I've been at night person from the moment I started college. Finish up these following sentences. I can't concentrate after. I take a nap whenever. Okay. So that, that, that example is, I, can, I can't concentrate after, and we need the verb with ing. For example, me, I can't concentrate after a fight. I can't concentrate after fighting. Or arguing. Do you understand that? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you say, for example, I can't, I can't concentrate after, after um, arguing with my friends, with my boss, with my wife. And it's true, you can't concentrate. Okay, who can give me another example? Claudia, before going to work, Uh, I have to take a bath. Okay, good. Now you can say it two forms. I have to take a bath before going to work or before going to work, I have to take a bath. Okay. 
the two are correct. I can concentrate while I hear music. Okay, good. And it can say, I can concentrate while listening to music. While listening to music. Listening to music, okay. I can't sleep without the air conditioning, uh, without the fan spinning. So I can't sleep without this, uh, the fan spinning. You know, the fan spins. El ventilador. Yes. We see the exercise. Okay, so here, let's listen to Sean, Lisa, and Victor talk about stress. What is the main cause of stress for each person? So let's listen to this. Chilling out. B. Listen to Sean, S, Lisa, L, and Victor, V, talk about stress. What is the main cause of stress for each person? Write the correct letter. 1. Sean. You know, I never appreciated all the things my mother did until I moved here to go to school. Since getting my own place, I've had to grocery shop, cook, clean, and do laundry. And I have to go to classes, research stuff at the library, write essays, and study. Having all this stuff to do really makes me feel pressured. And when I feel pressured, I get stressed out. And then I have no energy to do anything. So when I start feeling that way, I call home. I talk to my parents and have a few laughs with my kid brother. As soon as I start talking to my family, I feel better. It's like magic. 2. Lisa I just don't think there are enough hours in the day. My husband and I both work, and we have two small children, so we're on the go from the moment we get up until the time we go to bed. We love our jobs, and we adore our kids. But sometimes enough is enough. Every so often, my husband and I just need a little downtime. If we don't get any, we start to feel the stress and fatigue building up. After the last time it happened, I found the perfect solution. Now, before things get out of hand, I arrange for my children to sleep over at my neighbor's place. It's fine because Betty, that's my neighbor's name, Betty and I are good friends and her kids and our kids are friends too. Actually, the kids really like going over there. So anyway, after the kids leave, my husband and I have a quiet dinner and maybe watch a video or just listen to some music and talk. I can almost feel the stress melt away. Of course, the neighbor's kids sleep over here sometimes too. Three, Victor. Traffic stresses me out. My family lives in a quiet little suburb north of the city. That means I have to drive in for school and my part-time job. I used to start getting tense even before I got on the highway. Some rush hour drivers can be very rude, and the traffic is usually bumper to bumper. You have to be alert because someone's always trying to cut in front of you. Anyway, now I leave home before the traffic gets too heavy. I know I'll be early, but as soon as I get there, I go to a little cafe I know and have a coffee and look at the paper or review for my classes. I've made friends with the other regulars, so now I'm always full of energy and ready to start the day. Okay. Lisa. Thank you. So Lisa has too little time. Too much traffic. Victor. Victor. Too many responsibilities. Me. Mm -hmm. Sean. Sean. The, the, the name is Sean, it's not seen. 
Sean. Okay. Okay, let's go. Chilling out. Corner. B. Listen to Sean, S, Lisa, L, and Victor, V, talk about stress. What is the main cause of stress for each person? Write the correct letter. 1. Sean You know, I never appreciated all the things my mother did until I moved here to go to school. Since getting my own place, I've had to grocery shop, cook, clean, and do laundry. And I have to go to classes, research stuff at the library, write essays, and study. Having all this stuff to do really makes me feel pressured. And when I feel pressured, I get stressed out. And then I have no energy to do anything. So when I start feeling that way, I call home. I talk to my parents and have a few laughs with my kid brother. As soon as I start talking to my family, I feel better. It's like magic. 2. Lisa I just don't think there are enough hours in the day. My husband and I both work, and we have two small children, so we're on the go from the moment we get up until the time we go to bed. We love our jobs, and we adore our kids, but sometimes enough is enough. Every so often, my husband and I just need a little downtime. If we don't get any, we start to feel the stress and fatigue building up. After the last time it happened, I found the perfect solution. Now, before things get out of hand, I arrange for my children to sleep over at my neighbor's place. It's fine because Betty, that's my neighbor's name, Betty and I are good friends, and her kids and our kids are friends too. Actually, the kids really like going over there. So anyway, after the kids leave, my husband and I have a quiet dinner and maybe watch a video or just listen to some music and talk. I can almost feel the stress melt away. Of course, the neighbor's kids sleep over here sometimes, too. 3. Victor Traffic stresses me out. My family lives in a quiet little suburb north of the city. That means I have to drive in for school and my part-time job. I used to start getting tense even before I got on the highway. Some rush hour drivers can be very rude, and the traffic is usually bumper to bumper. You have to be alert because someone's always trying to cut in front of you. Anyway, now I leave home before the traffic gets too heavy. I know I'll be early, but as soon as I get there, I go to a little cafe I know and have a coffee and look at the paper or review for my classes. I've made friends with the other regulars, so now I'm always full of energy and ready to start the day. So here, Lisa, what does she do? Has kids. Has kids sleepover. Do you know what is a sleepover? <laughs> yes and no, because actually sleepover also, if you, if you have a friend visiting you or a, imagine like, like Jesus, do you, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jesus, Bert. No. Yeah, Lisa. Do you have family in San Salvador? Mm, it, not, not a family, but it's close to family. So when you come here, you stay in his or her house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can that, stay in his house. That is a sleepover. So this person will tell his mother, his wife, his father, whatever, Hey, look, Albert is coming in. Albert is coming Saturday. He's going to sleep over. So it's really not necessarily only pijama. Just a normal sleepover. Uh, I have my room, by the way. <laughs> huh? I oh, have yeah. a room for me. Oh, you do? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I do have a room. Nice. Or like, you know, sometimes maybe you're driving and you're going like, let's say a, a distant place, like from San Salvador to Guatemala, but it's the, the weather is terrible, it's raining. And you know, you say, no, we have to sleep over. We're going to sleep over in Santa Ana and continue tomorrow. That is what a sleepover is. 
Okay, what happened to Sean? Calls home when feels stressed out. He calls home when he is stressed out, stressed out, and it works, he says. What about Victor? Leave early. Leave have leave home early before traffic gets too heavy. Good. Leaves home early before traffic gets too heavy. Let me see. Let me see next. Okay, here participants will learn expressions about sleep. Expressions about sleep. Let's hear about the. Hi, what are your sleeping habits? We'll teach you some expressions about sleep. Expressions related to sleep. Be fast asleep. Be sound asleep. Be wide awake. Drift off. Feel drowsy. Have a sleepless night. Not off. I sleep like a log. Take a power nap. Toss and turn. We want you to write the following categories on your notebook. Number one, having trouble sleeping. Number two, falling asleep. Number three, sleeping a short time. Number four, sleeping deeply. Put the expressions just learned about sleep in the right columns. Then compare your answers with a partner in class. Do you know I have been married 10 years, I think, 10 years? and I sleep separately with my wife. But we have a good relation, we're not angry. We just, she has her room, I have my room. And yeah, sometimes I visit her. <laughs> no, but what happens is that um, because of the vocabulary, let me see. What happened was that when we got married, I need, and me personally, I need to sleep watching TV, watching, I don't know, my telephone or the fan. My wife, no, my wife is a vampire. She needs total silence. She doesn't like to open the windows. And and she she my wife needs complete silence. And I don't like silence because when it's silence, I can't sleep. When it's very silent, you listen to things you don't normally hear. You know? So so then the first night, what I did is I went to the other room to watch TV. And when I finished watching TV. I go to the room with my wife and sleep, you know? So on the next day, I did the same thing. The next day, I did the same thing. But one day, I, I fell asleep in that room. I fell asleep in that room. So like, like at 3 in the morning, oh, my God. So I went back to my wife's room. But then every night, I fell asleep in the other room watching TV. Mm -hmm. So it's cool because... I have my room, my wife has her room. So I have toys in my room. <laughs> I have skeletors, devils, many things. Oh, those toys. <laughs> those toys, yes. Mm -hmm. I have evil toys in my room. Okay, listen. Fast asleep. Are you, do you, are you like, do you, I am a fast asleep. What is that? 
It's getting asleep very fast. Yes. When you have no problem sleeping, you know, como el papá, Grandpa Simpson. <laughs> you know, like, Ugh. and you know, it's funny. My father was like that. Me too. <laughs> you too? My grandfather it was like that. Yes, they're, they're talking. <laughs> That's fast asleep. <laughs> What about sound asleep? That's new for me. Sound asleep is when you sleep heavily. Hey, did you feel the earthquake yesterday? No, man, I was sound asleep. I was like in um. In my quinto swing or something, you know, sound asleep. So it's very difficult for you to wake up. Okay. I think I am sound asleep because sometimes I don't feel earthquakes. I don't feel the door open. I don't feel when somebody turns on the light. It's just the next day I wake up and it's like, my wife tells me, I was in your room. Yeah. You didn't see me? No. I was using the computer and you were sound asleep. I'm all... <laughs> that is sound asleep. What is wide awake? Maybe having some problem to wake up? No, the contrary. Wake up is like, Wide awake is wide. Your eyes are wide. You're like, for example, man, yesterday it was 11 p.m. and I was wide awake. So wide awake is the contrary to sleepy. ¿Qué sería wide awake then? You have insomnia? Some, somebody insomnia? No, no, insomnia is insomnia. No, insomnia is como despierto. Wide awake is, está bien despierto, bien despierto. Sir. Do you have okay. baby, oh, Gerardo, do you remember your babies? When you say, shh, voy a ir a ver al niño. And when you go look at him, he's wide awake. Yes. It happens. Sueño rende los niños. Huh? Como el sueño rende los niños. Eso creo que sería sound asleep. Ah. Okay. Thank no, you. but wide awake is the contrary. Remember your babies? When when you go check on them at midnight and you enter, you open the door very slowly and you don't turn on the light because you think they are sleeping and you go shh, shh, shh. shh. And when you when you look at them, your baby is like this. The eyes are very open. Playing, playing sometimes. Yes. Y es cuando uno vuelve y se está bien despierto, man. You have two children, correct, Gerardo? Yes, one it has five years and the second one nine years. So I, it happens to me with my five years kid Re remember the one when he was nine the baby when he when the, the older one was a baby did you frequently check on him yes yes i still i still do, do it no but did I you check the, the, did, did when they were babies did you check if they were breathing ah yes yes we did <laughs> yeah they say that every mother and father that happens to every mother and father like ¿Qué estás haciendo? Es que no lo veo moverse, quiero ver si está respirando. My, my wife uh, put a spoon in the other way, so oh. I don't know how to say that. Como que la, como que fox. saca una fox, like a fox, like in a spoon, uh, so it's a light. <laughs> Yo le jalaba el pie. Yeah, then he moved, like, okay, he's okay. <laughs> you know, I pull his feet and he moved. All right, so that is that is wide awake. 
feel drowsy. Drowsy is. Ya con sueño. Ya sentir sueño. Mm -hmm. A sleepless no, night. Mm -hmm. Sleepless night. Remember those university nights where you had to study all day, all night? So you say, man, tonight I'm going to have a sleepless night. I'm not going to sleep. Like desvelarse. Yes. Not off. No, ese no se usa. Sleep like a dog. Eh. I don't recommend you to use that because now it's very offensive. Porque hoy la generación cristal se, se ofende si uno le dice, hey, no me, tra no me, me está dando de comer como que si soy perro, por ejemplo. Yo, ¿Y cómo comen los perros? <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> crystal generation. So. Entonces ya, uh -huh. hey, no seas animal. Ay, ¿y qué? Los animales son malos. Like, oh, God. So, so don't say, don't say animals anymore. But it, hey. it says log, log. Not, not dog. Oh, it's true. Uh, okay. Pero existe sleep like a dog. Ah, okay. Oh, creo que por eso lo cambiaron. Okay, sleep like a log. Do you know what is a log? A tronco. A tronco. El tronco, si nadie lo mueve, ahí queda. That's sleep like a log. Next, a power nap. I think that's similar to Spanish. A power nap, yes. Okay. Do you take power naps? Yes, I take power naps. Very frankly. Hmm? Yes, I take it. Sometimes yeah, I it... take it with a coffee. So I take a coffee, then a power nap, and after 20 minutes, I feel really better. Yeah, okay. And next we have toss and turn. No sé si su esposa, esposo, pareja. Son de los que, bueno, buenas noches, mi amor. Se da la vuelta y... That is toss and turn. Maybe that's me. I, 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 I just... It depends how tired I get sometimes. I remember like 10 years or 15 years ago when I was single, I lived alone. Vivía solo. And um, for me, Saturday and Sundays were the best because I, I didn't like people, I didn't like to take people to my house. So what I used to do is I used to go to downtown, El Centro, and I used to buy maybe 10 movies. And I used to watch the 10 movies, Saturday and Sunday. I used to love, like it was three in the morning and the next movie, and then five in the morning, you sleep one hour, you wake up, very disorganized time. But man, it was fun. Now, ¿cómo es? Antes miraba 10 películas en un día, hoy miro una película en 10 días. Mm. You know, hay una película que ya, ya creo que ya le perdí el interés, ya llevo como un mes. And I never watch it like That's why I don't like to go to the movies to Cinemark or Igo because ugh, I sleep. That's why, Angelica, I don't want to go watch um, Mario Brothers. No, I don't believe it. <laughs> Imagine pay what? How much? How much is the 
How much is the movie ticket now? $5? Yes, five. $5, six. Do you know, do you know how movies make their money, the, the cinemas? No, I don't. Okay. How, how, how do you think, Los Cines, how do they make money? Mm, I think they make money by selling the snacks. Yes. They make, they make money from food only, not from the movies. Uh-huh. Because I remember a long time ago, I was a teacher for, for the general manager of Cinemark. And for example, Cinemark El Salvador, they buy, ellos compran Mario Brothers. I thought it was different. I thought Mario Brothers says, here Cinemark, give me a percentage. Deme un porcentaje de, de esa película. Yeah. But no, Cinemark buys the movie. They have to invest on the movie. And then when people come watch the movie, the money is in the snack bar. That's why one soda is like $3. All right, chocolate, like $5. <laughs> Yes. How how much is how much is popcorn now in the movies? It's around by twelve dollars. If wow. the it is the small combo, but if you want or add some nachos or hot dog, it costs you around like fifteen or twenty dollars. Wow. It's very expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive. That's why, thank you, Quibana. Where do you watch the movies, in Quibana? Uh, it can be in Quibana or Feliz Plus. <laughs> Feliz Plus. <laughs> Or download. I watch it. I watch it in. I recommend Cine Calidad. Cine Calidad. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Oops. It's an app. No, no, it's a, it's in the web page. A web page. I don't know if is if they have an app. Oh, I right. use it in the web. Mm. Sometimes they don't have the last movie. They prefer to wait and and put online movies with a nice um, quality. Quality. Sorry. Oh, okay. Do you know what what TV show? I recommend you. Do you have Netflix? Yes, I have. You should watch The Blacklist. I have it in my list. To see. Ah, that shows. He's good. Mm -hmm. He's good I, rec I recommend Mind Hunter. I love Mind yeah, that was good too. Mm -hmm. um, Bert, you might like this. I really, really recommend you. Do you know Borat? Mm -mm. Never heard about Borat. You don't know Borat? It's a funny movie, right? Yeah. Do you really? see my screen? Yeah, I see yes. your screen. Do you see him, this man, Borat? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. There is a mini series in Netflix. It was a true story. Se llama El Mejor Espilla del Mundo. Man, that, that, oh, it's only eight episodes. And it was a true story. He was a Jew. Actually, he is a Jew. Uh, yeah, I think he is a Jew. And um, 
he got infiltrated with the Pakistan. So the Pakistan people believed that he was from Pakistan. He se infiltró con ellos. Y él era el que le daba los secretos a los judíos. Era vida real. Pero llegó a tan lejos que casi llegó a ser parte del gobierno de Pakistán. Man, it's a very good movie. I'm sorry, mini series. It was a true story. Dicen que hay una estatua de él en Israel. Como el mejor, el mejor espía del mundo. Y así se llama The Spy. Y es bien feo por la forma como lo, lo descubrieron. Man, oh, the cholera, like, oh, man. But it's a good. Okay, let me see what time is it. All right, cool. We only have one minute. So today's Wednesday. So tomorrow, Claudia, is your Monday. Yes, it's my Monday. What about your boyfriend? Where does he does he does he work? And yes, actually he speak English, but uh, he start working in a call center, but he didn't like it. Yes. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. where? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, do how do you see him every day or do you? No. One or two times a week. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, the reason why I ask you is because imagine um, Claudia was telling me that her days off are Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. And his off are Saturday and Sunday sometimes. Oh man, so you can't you can't go party Saturday night. No. So if your friends or your or your boyfriend tells you, "Hey Claudia, let's go let's go to a discotheque," you can't. No. <laughs> well, you can, but it's going to be difficult the next day. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, okay, class, then thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow. Hey, teacher. Okay, teacher. Bye. Bye. Have Good a wonderful night. day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.